Welcome everyone. Uh, I will now call the meeting for June the 18th, regular council meeting to order, and I will ask if there's any conflict of interest amongst the council members. No, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Roger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 4, adoption of published agenda, uh, that the published agenda be adopted as presented or as amended. And through you, Mr. Chair, I do have one uh, correction to the published agenda. Uh, item 8.7, which consists of corporate services report 2018-17, uh, the reference to the amount of outstanding taxes on page 1 should be 12,406.10 um, and not 10,905. Um, and, and that's it for me, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Are there any? Oh, Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When the time is right, I'd like to add a notice of motion tonight for discussion at the next council meeting as well. Thank you. Councilor Rogers. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you, Councilor Snively. Second it. Yep. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Motion. Item 5.1, that the minutes of the regular council meeting held June 4th be adopted as circulated. Councilor Bunny and Councilor Rogers, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 5.2, that the minutes of the special council meeting held June 4th, 2018 be adopted as circulated. Deputy Mayor Malash and Councilor Bjorkman, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item six, public presentations. Uh, 6.1 is presentation of the senior of the year. I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. Chair, if the recipient is here yet, so perhaps we could move on to the next. Um, uh, I don't see her. I know her. She's not here. So okay. We so, can do that. so we'll look for her to come in. and. Um, so through the chair, moving on to 6.2 for now in the agenda, is a presentation to Joe Malosh of the Essex Fire and Rescue Services. And this is in recognition uh, of Mr. Malosh as a recipient of the 2018 Essex Windsor EMS Survivor Award.
during the day. Through you, Mr. Chair, 6.3 on the agenda is uh, Mike Cowan, partner at BDO, who's here this evening to present the 2017 Corporation of the Town of Essex audited financial statements. Uh, these statements are being presented for adoption for adoption this evening by council. Welcome, Mike. Good evening. Thanks for having me. So I believe the statements were uh, circulated earlier and you've had a chance to look through them. I'm going to go through some of the highlights. Uh, I think we're looking at about 35 pages, so we're not going to go through every line, uh, but I'm going to point out a few things that uh, I think you need to be made aware of in order to, uh, to make that decision to, uh, to accept the statements. First off, I just want to thank Jeff and Kate and the, the rest of their team that helped us get through the audit process. Um, every year we learn a few new efficiencies and uh, hope to continue to do that. And uh, I think we have a pretty good relationship in terms of working together and allowing us to, to come in and do the things we need to do to provide our opinion. So thanks again. So I'm going to start on uh, page two, might be the third page in the PDF. It's our independent auditor's report. So I'm not going to read this, but just kind of highlight what each section means. So first off, just stating that we've audited the financial statements of the consolidated statements. And it highlights the different statements that are included. For argument's sake, uh, a statement of financial position is your balance sheet. And then the statement of consolidated operations and accumulated surplus is essentially your income statement. So. Uh, if, I, if I interchange those words, just to get and give you a heads up, that's kind of that, an idea of what those refer to. Second paragraph talks to management's responsibility. So although we assist in, help, in preparation, in the assistance of preparing the statements, uh, it is a responsibility of management to, to make sure these statements are prepared correctly. And then our job is the next set of paragraphs that says that our responsibility is to provide an opinion, that, which is what you're paying us to do. So we go through a series of testing and analytical review and a lot of discussions with your staff to make sure that we can make that decision. And then on the next page, it, it says, well, right before that, it says we believe we have enough info to make the opinion that we're making. And the opinion is that the statements we believe present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the town as at December 31, 2017, and for the year then ended. You'll notice that it's dated today. Uh, and you do notice the draft stamp across them. Uh, theoretically, you'll approve these as they are. Uh, of course, if you have questions, we'll go through that. But at the end of the day, uh, after your approval, that's why we date the report today, that we can then finalize the statement. So there are a few pieces outstanding, a couple legal letters where we send out just to, to get responses from. They often wait right until the, the date of today to get back to us. Uh, a couple little odds and ends that need to be cleaned up. For the most part, we're, we're pretty much ready to finalize. So, The next page is the consolidated statement of financial position. As I said, it's basically the balance sheet. So a few things I'll point out. Uh, the top part is the financial assets. So one thing you'll notice is the cash position is significantly higher. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, you'll see a little bit further down that long-term debt has gone up. So you did uh, issue some new debt. I'll get to that in a second. But also just cash management and position at the end of the year due to timing. One thing leading to that, although it's only about a $400,000 difference, is the taxes receivables come down. So an extra effort in, in terms of trying to collect and, and bring in those receivables, which is great. Um, you'll see the long-term investments line is another one I want to point out. And that's really your share of the Union Water investment. Uh, so it's because we show your share of their, their activity, that, that's why. Some of those numbers are, are buried in your numbers, but that one sticks out because you don't have a similar investment. After the financial assets, uh, you see the liabilities. And again, pay payables are down. So again, we've been able to bring in more money and also pay things down a little quicker. So that's a, a good sign that, again, the cash position is, is healthy. 
the uh, employee future benefits was always an actuarial study done to, to determine what the estimated cost is going to be. It shows up as a liability. And as I mentioned, uh, long-term debt, when we get to that section, I'm going to highlight a couple little things. But the debt has gone up uh, during the year. The next thing you see is the tangible capital assets of almost $188 million. And that's come down a little. So there's been some additions, but we also depreciate or amortize, whichever word you want to use, the assets that you do have to get to that number. So as, as I typically say, the surplus of over $213 million is not to be thought of as a, the old school surplus in terms of a cash surplus. It's all the assets of, of the town. So, you know, the tangible capital assets making up a very large portion of that. I'll highlight the reserves that you have set aside and they're shown in the statements when we get to that as well um, to give you an idea of, of the, the surplus sort of from the old mentality prior to adopting a public, st standard, public standards accounting. <laughs> Peace out. I can't remember the term. But, um, so uh, I will move to the next page, which is, as I mentioned, basically your income statement. So there's three columns here. The first one is the budget. And there's a note tied to that because, again, you guys budget based on a, a cash flow needs basis for the most part. But then we adjust it to, to this presentation. So there's that note, note 13, which we're not going to go to at the moment, but it just basically takes the budget that you guys approved and adjusts it to, these, to this style. So the couple things to highlight here, the taxation revenue is up, uh, but that was essentially budgeted for for the most part. So you, you can see that that was somewhat expected. There are differences in terms of budget and prior year. Um, one thing that sticks out a little is landfill compensation. You, you don't budget for some of those revenues, um, I think related to the DRIC projects, I think. So there's certain things that aren't budgeted for. And you can see your numbers very close to last year, but not, not necessarily um, budgeted for. Things like the share of your income from ELK, we, we don't budget for that. But typically, there is your share of earnings that come out of that, as you, you have 100% ownership in that. So total revenues, actual revenues for the year were about 36.5 million uh, versus 34.8 in the prior year. And a little bit up over, over budget. There were some differences, again, that were budgeted for and also uh, some grant, a little bit of extra grant revenue that came in and a few other differences. On the expense side, everything's broken down by different categories, general government, protection to persons and property, et cetera. So you'll see some differences from budgets. It's, it's very rare to see that you'd come in exactly on budget as certain projects do get delayed or, or brought in early. Uh, but you will see that there's, there is some comparison likely to the prior year, uh, but obviously some differences in here and there. So we go through all those analytical discussion with, with uh, your team and, uh, and, and come to the conclusion that everything essentially makes sense based on what we're hearing and what we're seeing. So there is a surplus, and again, I remind you that the surplus is not necessarily a cash surplus. It's a surplus according to uh, the PSAB standards. The next page is a, a statement of changes in net financial assets. So it just kind of highlights, the only thing I'll point out here is the acquisition of, of tangible capital assets ended up being about 11.5 million. About 6.5 of that was in process in the prior year and actually flipped over to actual being completed and, and, and completed. So overall, there's not too much more that I would highlight on this page. The next page is the consolidated statement of cash flows. Again, it takes your surplus and, and, and uh, helps you try to figure out how, why and how did cash go up or down, because uh, the surplus isn't necessarily the answer to the cash change. Uh, so again, I'm not going to say too much more there other than point out the long-term debt issued was about 6.1, and you paid out down about 1.3. So again, we'll see that long-term debt note in, in a few moments. The next several pages, I'm not going to go through in detail, there are uh, a lot of verbiage to describe how certain things are accounted for. So wondering how, how, how do we depreciate certain things, there's a, a note about that. How are government transfers treated, how is taxation revenue recorded. So all those things are listed there. And nothing's changed year over year, it's more just information to help you as you're reading through 
determine if uh, how things were dealt with. Note two and three, a little bit more information on your ELK investment and also the equity in Union Water Supply. So a lot of information basically from those financial statements and how they pull into your statements. Next page is, I'm going to point out note five, I've said the long-term debt section. So there was one new debenture and it consolidated a bunch of, of different projects. So our, our notes are suggesting about 1.1 toward, $1 million towards community services, almost 2 million for public works and about 3 million for Essex Center basement flooding uh, reduction strategy. And the other new loan you'll see is uh, item four, which is, or 1V, which is the vehicle debentures. So uh, those are the two main loans that make up the new debt in the year. And we've, historically we've showed the debt broken down by user fee supported. So when user fees are gonna help pay down the debt, onto the next page for property tax supported, and then the debt relating to benefiting property owners. So again, you, you see there's numbers in the prior and the current column for pretty much all the loan, well, all the loans except for the two I pointed out and all the regular payments are being made. I think the last note I'm gonna go into any major detail on is note seven, which is the accumulated surplus. So it breaks it down sort of in the, in the, the way you see the number on the statements, but again, sort of to the old pre-PSAP standards kind of give you an idea of what relates to debt, what relates to uh, capital fund, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, but the, the bigger thing here is the reserves and they've gone from 39.5 to 45.7. And then there's a, the, a further note breaking down the differences. So the, the portion of reserves for capital purposes, the portion that relates to the landfill, uh, contingencies, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, a question we often get is, are the reserves sufficient? It's a very difficult question to answer, but I guess the comforting thing is to see that you, you do have a, a significant amount of reserves and the fact that when you're budgeting, using money from reserves and putting money into reserves is very important. Uh, thinking about the life cycle of assets, and I know that's become more important with the asset management that you guys are, are working on. Uh, so again, very difficult question to, to answer. Uh, but at the end of the day, there is a significant amount of reserves. And when you're, you know, operating a, a community of this size and uh, with the activity going on, I would say those reserves are, are, are definitely needed. And uh, that's, about all, 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 that's about all I'll say on that in terms of commenting on it. So the next several pages provide a little bit more information in terms of support for numbers. <laughs> There's a few schedules at the back for tangible capital assets. So we take that 188 million we spoke of, break it down by land, buildings, vehicles, et cetera, to give you an idea of each of those classifications, what's gone into them, what's come out, how much we've depreciated over the year. And because there's so many numbers, the, the current year is on uh, one page, it's 26 at the bottom, it might be 27 in your PDF. And uh, the prior year is on the next page. And then the very last uh, one before we get to the trust statements is the schedule of segment disclosures. Uh, so again, just taking the data that you see on the income statement and breaking it down by the different uh, departments to give you an idea of uh, where the, what the revenues relate to in terms of department and what the expenses relate to. At the end of the day, those numbers do tie to the income statement. And again, there's so many numbers that the one year shows on the one page and the prior year shows on the next. And then finally, the trust statements. So there's another audit report because the trusts are, are funds held in trust by the town. Uh, really, the only thing in here is the, uh, the cemetery revenues. So they used to, I, I'm trying to remember the other one, but it fell off the statements a few years ago. Uh, but that's the only activity there. And you do, those funds do show up and you have bank accounts for these, but again, they're held in trust. So they're shown separately and we provide a separate statement for them. That's all I had. Um, welcome to uh, take any questions. Any questions from our council members? Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. 
thank you very much, Mr. Count, for coming out and uh, sharing this with us. But my question is for uh, our our staff, uh, Mr. Morrison. Um, just it's just a very high level uh, report here, but in going through the report and in your estimation, following our budget and where we are, are here, is this quite reflective of the budget that we worked out for this year? And are you comfortable uh, with where this report takes us? Thank you, sir. Through the chair. Through the chair. Is that loud? Can you hear me? Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, everything lined up nicely. Um, the work that staff did on the budget, it aligned very nicely with the actuals. Um, it's not shown within these documents, it's the pre-PSAP pre documents, but we actually ended up with about a surplus of approximately 800 plus thousand dollars. So we're in a nice position. Um, yeah, everything uh, everything's aligned as budgeted and uh, the long-term financial plan, the five-year financial plan with the uh, budget, I think it's, it's a stepping stone and it's, it's nice because you can see and we can kind of trend where we're going and it's nice to have this measurement against it, so. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Because the uh, the peace app, I believe uh, you re referred to, like when when you talk about uh, you know we've got a, a surplus. I always get excited about the accumulated surplus. So when we were told that wasn't it, I just I wanted to hear that from Jeff that in, in our numbers that yes we are heading in that direction. So again, thank you very much for the report and thank you, Jeff and staff, for your work. Any further questions, comments, Councilor Bondi? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just going back to page 12, I just want to clarify in my mind, again, I know I believe I've asked this question before, but we're not, in regards to the elk, the purchase premium, the increase there, am I correct to say that we're not taking dividends from elk? This is just elk's value going up? Could we just clarify that one more time? I just want to make sure, because I know we had the conversation about one day we would take dividends from elk, but I still don't. I just don't know if we are taking dividends for elk or if that's just the increase in elk's value. Because the other word, sorry, hang on, I'm going back to the note. The other word saying undistributed, uh, just kind of, I just would like clarification. Thanks. I, I, can, I can handle that. The, there haven't been dividends. Uh, I think ever since you guys took over the 100%, there hasn't been, I think there was prior to that, but uh, basically, you're correct. The undistributed means it's it's your share of the income, and as you own 100%, that's it's the full amount. The value of the net assets in Elk is the nine million nine hundred ninety-one thousand. And when you, because when you purchased Elk out from the other parties, you had a premium to pay, and we're writing that off over the the course of so many years. Um, and that's what that difference is. When that premium is done being written off, I think there's another. 11 years left on it, so I think it was 20 to begin with. Does that, does that sound right? Um, that will get you down so that your your value is equal to the book value of elk. And whether or not dividends are paid, it will be up to you. That would reduce the, the book value of elk, but would move the ca their extra cash from elk over to you. That is a decision of the elk board. Anything further? Council members. Motion received. The report is presented. Councilor Bonnie, Councilor oh. and, ad and adopted. And Councilor Rogers supports. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for that. Nice job again. Okay, for, for everyone's information, we called this uh, Miss Dennis, Mrs. Dennis, and she won't be here this evening. So, okay, she'll be here in July. She'll be here in July. So, don't wait for her. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. 
So through you, Mr. Chair, the next presentation then is the is under 6.4 presentation of the new town of Off town of Essex mayor's chain of office. Uh, and for that, Your Worship, it's probably best if we could stand in front of the council table here for that presentation. So for the, pres for the presentation this evening, uh, ancient knights of medieval history wore devices in color emblazoned on their shields, armor, and clothes uh, to identify their families and to identify their allegiance. Uh, originating with the Dukes of Normandy, civic authorities have borne an official seal incorporating the arms of the authority. This seal was originally worn on a gold chain around the neck of the chief official and this decoration has evolved into the chain of office. The mayor's chain, chain of office is steeped in historic tradition dating back over a thousand years and today many mayors of municipal councils uh, throughout the democratic world uh, still wear distinctive chains of office. Uh, the chain of office is composed of symbolic elements joined with pieces of chain from which hangs a medallion. Uh, the chain of office is sewn onto a velvet collar which is not only de uh, decorative, but also makes it more comfortable to wear. Uh, <laughs> so this, this new chain of office includes a suspended medallion of the newest Town of Essex logo, uh, both the provincial and the federal coat of arms, uh, as well as name bars for each of the mayors who have served the Town of Essex. The mayor wears the chain of office both when appearing in an official capacity, such as when conducting meetings in council chambers and on ceremonial occasions. Uh, all as a mark of pride in our community in which we live and also as an acknowledgement of the responsibilities, authorum, uh, authority and decorum, which are attached not only to the office of the mayor, but also the role and function of Essex Town Council. Uh, this chain of office is to be worn henceforth by the current mayor and all future mayors of the town of Essex. I therefore present to his worship, Ron McDermott, the new town of Essex chain of office. May this serve as a symbol and reminder of the decorum and important duties and responsibilities that come with the role of mayor and of town council. And I do love the trilliums on there. Ontario flower. I got a little patch under my kitchen window ever since I was a little guy. Beautiful. Okay. Item 8 on the agenda. Reports. 8.1. Infrastructure and Development 2018-10. Results of request for tender. For receipt. And that council approved the request for tender for a concrete sidewalk construction to LV Giorgio Construction 
in the amount of 169-251-56. Moved by Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. 8.2, Building Department Report 2018-04 and 2018-05, providing Council with updates on building activity for the months of April and May for receipt. Moved by Councilor Berkman, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Questions? All in favor? That carries. 8.3 CAO Report 2018-04, re-breakdown of costs, Essex Fire and Rescue Services, workplace assessment for receipt this evening. Moved by Councilor Bondi, supported by Councilor Vokes. Any question? Motion carries. Oh, vote. All in favor. Motion carries. 8.4, Community Services 2018-021, renewal agreement with the Essex 73's Hockey Club for sign advertising at the Essex Center Sports Complex. And this is together with bylaw 1710, authorizing the execution of that lease agreement for three readings this evening for receipt that the and that the renewal agreement be approved for another four years subject to the terms and conditions specified and with three readings to bylaw 1710. by Councillor Bjorkman supported by Councillor Bondi any questions in favor oh, oh question question from Councillor Bondi Thank you, Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just through you to our Director of Community Services, this isn't something that we have to go out and tender ever, right? Like, because just live and learn, I want to make sure that everything, all of our T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Mr. Sweet. To your worship, no, we haven't had luck in the past getting people to do this type of work. Um, we're fortunate, which goes to the next report, to have Harold Minder Hockey, you now Erie North Shore, to do it as well. So as um, long as they want to keep doing the work, that we would continue good with. It's a good partnership because they use our facility, so it's a win-win for both. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carries. 8.5, Community Services 2018-022, renewal agreement with Erie North Shore Minor Hockey Association for sign advertising at the Herald Arena. This together with bylaw 1711 for three readings for receipt and that a renewal agreement be approved for another four years subject to the terms and conditions specified and with three readings this evening to bylaw 1711 be in the bylaw to authorize the lease. By Deputy Mayor Millage, supported by Council Rogers. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Eight point six Community Services 2018-025, reallocation of funds for the Essex train station roof repairs for receipt and that council approve the reallocation of fifty five oh five twenty one from the savings from the roof project to the 2018 Essex train station roof repair project. Moved by Councilor Rogers, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Questions? Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In, in reading the report, I saw that we had over budgeted $100,000 for the one roof. Is that, did I read that correctly? If so, that's kind of, I, I can't believe that a job came in $100,000 less if, if I read it correctly. Maybe I didn't read it correctly. Your worship, Sweet. we've had consultants past come to evaluate all our roofs in preparation when they're due to be replaced. Um, based on this, the flat roof and gravel, that's what was anticipated. When they got up to examine it, it wasn't as bad repair as what they thought it was. That's why it was reduced. Any further? All in favor? Motion carries. 8.7, Corporate Services 2018-07, re-extension agreement for receipt, and that bylaw 1712, being a bylaw to authorize the extension agreement, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed this evening. Moved well, by Councilor Bondi and Councilor Snively Sports. Any questions? All in favor? That carries. 8.8, Clerk's Report 2018-08, re-amendments to signs by law 1315, re-election signs, and this is together with bylaw 1716, 
being the bylaw regulating the er erection of signs in the town of Essex for receipt and, and that the proposed amendments related to the time period for erection or removal of election signs and the minimum distance an election sign may be placed from a road right of way or sidewalk intersection be adopted and that bylaw 1716 to amend be read three sorry receive three readings this evening well, by Councilor Bundy, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash, with a question, sir. So I'm in agreement with everything that's in the report, except that I think the um, the erection of signs should be 60 days prior to the election day. Um, part of the reason that I'm looking at is uh, 30 days before the actual election day is a lot shorter to um, it's a lot shorter time to getting to when uh, advanced polls are is one reason. Uh, number two, uh, candidates put a lot of money into their signs. That's one of their top means of advertising. Um, to have a sign and only be able to put it up for 30 days uh, has makes it hard to justify the cost of the signs. Um, it, it's it's a lot less t the time constraint that it puts on the candidates that are running as well. I can understand not wanting them up for six months or eight months, but I think two months is not an unreasonable length of time uh, before the election. So you'd have uh, August 22nd instead of September 22nd. But the timing of it too, um, particularly in a position like uh, somebody who's running at large, there's a large area to get to. And to coordinate having the signs put up, um, and by the time people find out that you have a sign, that they want to put a sign up, I think that 60, 60 days is a lot more reasonable than 30 days. Thank you, sir. Councillor Snively. Through your worship, uh, I have to agree 100% with the Deputy Mayor. Um, the 30 days is just not enough time. Um, when you're, like I say, when you're running at large, uh, like for example, Deputy Mayor or Mayor, uh, I have to agree. That's a big, big area to cover, and uh, 30 days just really is enough time. I, I have to agree. 60 days, I agree with that 100 percent. So, if Councilor Vokes and then Councilor Rogers. Oh my God, Councilor, let's look at let's not subject taxpayers to trash in their yards, because that's what it turns into. It turns into trash. It's sign trash. And what we do as a council is we put all kinds of bylaws in place to control signs and, and where you put signs and what you do. And within two weeks of signs being up, unless you've got a real army of people out there working for you, those signs are just trash. They're, they're cut up, they're broke over, the winds knock them down, and they look like hell in yards. And if it was independently up to me, there'd be no signs in election at all. You just run on your merit and you get out there and you work. So I would never support a 60-day period for signs out there, again, littering people's yards, littering our communities. Because that's all it is. That's all it is. And thank God we can only put them in, in, on people's residence. Because if you could put them on, on side roads and in properties, it'd be 10 times worse. And if you can't get your message out to people in 30 days of putting signs up, maybe you should work a little harder. And I say that with the utmost respect. If people don't know your intentions of 30 days, then you're really missing your target. You truly are. I don't care if you're an, a newcomer or you're an incumbent. You're missing your target. You're missing it big, especially today with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and social media and newspaper ads and whatever. And now we want to throw another 30 days of trashy signs up all over the place. I wouldn't support that in a million years, and I hope this council wouldn't either. Sir, I have Mr. O'Shea first. Mr. Rogers. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, if it's helpful for council, um, certainly when we were uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, a couple of these revisions, um, we tried to balance some of those competing interests. Uh, we, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we tried to balance um, the concerns, for example, raised by Councillor Volks and the concerns um, raised by both Councillor Snively and, and the Deputy Mayor. Um, so, 
So certainly when we looked at other municipalities, uh, there, what, there is some variance in the time periods. Um, most of them did fall on the side of, of a period of roughly 30 to 60 days, but there was some variance in between uh, that. Um, so we, what, what, at, what we did feel and what we were recommending to council was certainly the, the 21 days, first of all, was ambiguous based on the current wording of the bylaw. Uh, uh, and you know, wasn't absolutely clear uh, on a literal reading of the bylaw if it was 21 days from voting day. Um, but but certainly we, we we felt that there 21 days was a little short, so we we extended to 30. But but certainly uh, there is variance among the municipalities between. But it, it roughly seems to um, center in uh, in that 30 to 60 day period. Thank you for that, Chair. Councilor Roger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Councilor Volks. I would not uh, be in favor of a 60-day sign bylaw by any means. I just uh, I was successful in a by-election uh, last fall that uh, I worked under the 21-day rule, and I I found nothing wrong with that. And moving it up to 30 days is uh, uh, is more than enough to have signs out there. It's sign pollution. It's it's visual pollution for people that have to live with it on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I've I've certainly been I've run in a number of elections. I've got my 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 signs, but I don't like seeing my signs out there any longer than they have to be either. Uh, it it it's just pollution on on the uh, on the horizon. You know it, we don't need that. Uh, as well, uh, what I really have an issue with is having a bylaw that we have no teeth in to do anything to enforce this bylaw. We have political signs in our, in our town right now from the provincial election that have not been taken down. And it would be my suggestion that we get a hold of the, the party that's, that, that is still in violation of this and tell them to remove their signs. Uh, that would be a about it right now, but we need, oh, yes, we need some type of uh, a penalty for people that put their signs up early or take or don't take them down. There's nothing in here that, uh, that so if I want to put my signs up two weeks earlier, what are you going to do to me? Uh, we need to either put something in the bylaw that, that the signs get taken down by the town and you don't get them back till after the election or something to that effect. There has to be some, some teeth in this bylaw. We have too many bylaws with really no teeth in them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering if we can answer Councillor Rogers' question about what happens if a sign goes up early and what happens if a sign doesn't come down. I think that, that question's important, so I would like that question answered, and then I have a further point, please. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, yeah, Councillor Rogers is correct. There, there isn't a specific set fine for a violation of, of uh, failure to remove the election sign. Um, certainly, my my approach uh, is has been to cite the bylaw and and directly contact the violators and ask them to remove. Um, at the beginning of the provincial election, we had some signs not only going up early but some signs that were um, outside the size allowed. Um, and when we, when we did contact the, the candidates, we contacted each of the candidates, um, there, there was compliance, but, but uh, Councillor Rogers is correct. There is not a set fine specific to this event. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that being said, <laughs> we can kind of do whatever we want <laughs> then, but Anyways, it's my motion, so to perhaps bring around a compromise, I know Councillor Bjorkman hasn't spoken yet, but I would be willing to make a friendly amendment to go to 45 days. 60 to me seems a little bit long, but 45 days, I'm, I have my calendar open right here. I actually find it an awkward situation to have this conversation with a council that has some candidates put their name in, right? Like this, we, we should have kind of figured this out before because it's kind of awkward to talk about ourselves or possible candidates. But if I look at the advance poll date, we have an advance poll October 6th. So the uh, September 22nd date is only two weeks ahead, is only two weeks. So I would be willing to make a friendly amendment to go to 45 days because then it gives almost a whole month before 
the first advance poll, which I think I think could be fair and could be a solution for this council if they're willing to look at a friendly amendment. Other than that, I will not be supporting the 60 days. Okay. My seconder has to decide. Hey, big part. Deputy Mayor Malash, friendly amendment. Okay, and with that, I have Councillor Snively. I'm going to allow a second. I would support that too. Okay. 45 days. Now, with regards to Councillor Rogers' problem, what's the penalty if we get out there too early or leave them too long? Are we able to put something in this proposal right here tonight so we all know? and. The people that aren't here tonight that will be running or are going to run, and they will be aware of it also. So we'd have to proceed with a set fine. That's the only thing we can do. In this can we case. do that right now, tonight? No, the set fines we need. Okay, discussion. Yeah, it won't be time for the election. Won't be done in time. And do we have an answer? Is that what you were discussing? Through you, Mr. Chair, the ultimately to have real sanctionability, we would need to bring that to set fines. So that is very unlikely to occur before this particular municipal election. Um, so, yeah, that that is the one part of this that that's lacking. But for but for future, we can move forward with that. But it won't be in time for the, the October election. So, anything further? to this motion. Councilor Volks, his hand up. I, I don't know why we make it complicated and why we can't do it. We're council. We can do whatever we want to do. And that's the truth. And, that, and if somebody is violating the terms of the signs and not getting them up, getting them up prior to or leaving, leaving them up after, then the truth is, is it's, not, it's, not, it's not complicated. You look at administrative time to send somebody out there to do it, whether it's a PUC work or whatever, and the assumption is on every sign he could spend an hour and a half by the time he left his position of work till he got there and got back. So it's a flat fee of $150 per sign. I, I don't know why we soft shoe around. I, I don't get it. If, if Look, at you, you've got a responsibility to signs. It's your responsibility, not the taxpayer's. And if you want to be rude and ignorant to it, then you're going to pay. Simple as that. And you're going to pay per sign. I don't know why we carry on about stuff, Council. Just, just put it in place, and it's done. And everybody will know it. And if we got to send a guy out there to, to take three signs down because they put him up early, or take three signs down because... They, they ignored the fact of the requirements of, of, of an election, then, then you'll be charged for it. And you'll obviously, if you're running in the town of Essex, if you don't want to pay it, we put it on your taxes. Simple as that. It's not complicated. So I'm, I'll make that a motion. We do that. And I have I'm a motion on the floor, sir, so right now. Pardon? We have a motion on the floor. Well, then I'll, right I'll, after we call the... the okay. So, if you're finished? Mm -hmm. Okay. You shut your mic off. I'm going to make a comment. If you were listening to the clerk, I wish it was as easy as you say it is. Just charge him. The clerk just told us we haven't got time to make that a rule. And we do follow the rules in this municipality. He just told us we don't have the time to put it in effect for this election. So... That's why we're not going to do it, because we can't. I want to see it done, too. But I now have our CEO, Mrs. Hunter, would like to make a comment. Through you, Your Worship, I was just basically going to say the same thing. I mean, the set fine schedule, we, we prepare it, but it has to be sent away and approved, and we have to receive a letter saying that they're approved to be, to be charged or to be used as set fines. So there is no way we're going to get that down and done 
within that time period. I know how long it takes for a set fine schedule to go through the process. Counter Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we can't put penalties in with this and we can't change it that way, I don't think we should be changing this, this uh, bylaw tonight. And uh, if we are going to vote on it, I'd like to have a, a recorded vote. Vote requested. So on the recorded vote, as requested by Councillor Rogers, which, uh, which motion has been amended to uh, contain a 45-day period related to the time period for erection of election signs. Uh, Councillor Rogers, how do you vote? Opposed. Councillor Snively? Support. Councillor Bondi? Support. Mayor McDermott? Support. Deputy Mayor Malosh? Support. Councillor Vokes? Opposed. Councillor Bjorkman? Support. So on the recorded vote, Councillor Rogers opposed, Councillor Snively support, Councillor Bondi support, the Mayor support, the Deputy Mayor support, Councillor Vokes opposed, and Councillor Bjorkman support. So with a total recorded vote of five in favor and two opposed, the motion carries. Mr. Mayor, just as a question to that, Oh, we are investigating the fine process. It just won't be ready for this election. Okay, just for clarification. Thank you. And Councilor Rogers. Yes, thank you. I have a question actually on on the uh, uh, bylaw, and it's on section 11.4. I guess that, uh, and it's uh, Article th or Two, uh, Three, and it's. Forming, a, it says something about the intersection and forming a daylight corner. I'd like to know what a daylight corner is. I'm sorry, I don't know. It's page, well, it's 98 of, page 98 of, uh, of our agenda. Oh, well, that's what I want to answer. Mr. Nepsey, sorry, yeah, sir. Uh, through your worship, a daylight corner is, is simply what it says. It daylights the corner, so it allows visibility uh, on any corner. So you can't, it's the six meter triangle within that corner. So you can't plunk a sign in the corner to uh, impede um, anybody at the intersection from sight lines. Okay, thank you. Down to the ropes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. 8.9, Clerk's Report 2018-10, Amendment to Park and Bylaw 224, Reed Jackson Street, Colchester Center. This is together with Bylaw 1718 to amend for receipt and that the pros proposed amendment to Schedule C of Bylaw 224 to permit parking in designated angle parking spaces along the west side of Jackson Street be adopted with three ratings to Bylaw 1718 accordingly. By Councilor Rogers, supported by Councilor Snively. Questions? All favor? Carries. Eight point ten. Clerk's report, two thousand eighteen eleven. Re advance voting days for the two thousand eighteen municipal election, and this is together with bylaw seventeen seventeen, being a bylaw to provide for the advance polls to be held prior to voting day. Said report for receipt and that the dates, times, and locations outlined therein be approved with three readings accordingly uh, to bylaw 1717 this evening. By Councillor Rogers, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions? Councillor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am I'm really fortunate for the advanced polls that we do have, especially one in, in Essex Center and one in Harrow Center. I, I am worried and I, I do want to know the reasons why, and, and I won't be supporting it as is just because it says the advanced poll goes nine to two. Uh, recently with the provincial election, there was an advanced poll at Harrowwood that closed at two o'clock. Uh, there was an advertising problem, it wasn't just strictly this, but I believe that if people are working afternoons, uh, say Friday night, 
you know, getting to the poll sometimes at 2 o'clock may be a little challenging. So I don't, first of all, I'd like to hear why it's closing so early. From what I remember in the past, our advanced polls were 10 to 4, not closing at 2. So I believe it's a cost concern, but I also believe that it should be open till 4. I, I believe very strongly about this, unless there's, Councillor Snively saying 5, well, I'll take it, but, uh, but the, the, ten, the 9 to 2, just really worries me because I, I know that we're going to hear complaints. I absolutely know that we're going to hear complaints that it's closing at 2. It's just too early. Hey. Councillor Schneidley. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I agree 100% with Councillor Bondi. Uh, people working days, if, if somebody's working days, they're getting off work anywhere from between 3 and 5 o'clock. Uh, okay, so uh, usually 3 to 4 o'clock they get off. But uh, to, to have them open to 2 o'clock, uh, I think we're going to mess out on the voters. I really do. I think people are going to say, you know, if that's the way the town's going to be, close, close these polls at 2 o'clock. Uh, I, I would say they should be open minimum to 5 o'clock. Nine, 9 to 5 or 10 to 5, they should be open till 5 o'clock. There's a lot of people work till 3 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, huh? They are on Saturdays. Huh? They are on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Worship. Can can I ask the question? Why did we decide uh, that two o'clock is the time to close? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we through you, Mr. Chair, we we set those times, and that replicated the times that we used last year for the um, the by election in, in Ward Three. Um, and in fact, I think the I think the by the advance in the by election uh, went over, and and so we were we were trying to balance what we thought was an appropriate period of time on a Saturday um, together with what had worked for the by-election but um, but but certainly you know if council's concerned that that period of time is not sufficient uh, then you know we can give consideration but that was the rec recommendation that came out we thought that was an appropriate period of time uh, on the Saturday uh, for, for both advanced polls. Councilor Snively. Sure, Your Worship. The only reason I'm saying that, uh, on a Saturday, on a Saturday, it's a regular working day for a lot of people now. Even Sundays is, as far as that goes. So uh, that's the only reason I, uh, I'll amend, I'll ask for an amendment on the motion if uh, Councillor Bondi is in agreement to it to five o'clock. Thank you. Ron Rogers and. And Councillor Bjorkman, supporting. With a question, Councillor Bjorkman. If if a concern is is expenses that we're working on uh, on a Saturday and it's it's cost uh, that we're looking at, are we better off? If we want to use the same amount of hours. Could we go noon to five? And if we're looking at people that are working on afternoons, they can be there between noon and two. And if we're looking at people that are working days, they can be there between 3.30 and 5 o'clock. If that's a, a, one of the considerations, it doesn't cost us anymore. We just adjust the hours. And if we're looking at people that are on swing shifts, that allows everybody to get there. Mr. Roger. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, our experience, and, and, you know, and based on consulting with the previous clerk, um, the, the notion of not opening the poll until 12 noon I don't think would be a good one. Um, it, based on the information I've received and, and what I saw firsthand during the by-election advance polls, um, you do get a lot of uh, residents showing up fairly early uh, to vote. In fact, the balance of them, I would suggest, did come to vote between, let's say, 9 a.m. and 12, um, and then it, it became progressively slower as the day, as the afternoon wore on. Further? Okay, thank you. So just to that, uh, then I'm fine. I just thought if this was, we were just looking at hours, uh, we could do that. But I'm fine with going 9 to 5 and making sure that everyone in the town has an opportunity to make it to the poll. Okay, ready for a question? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Point eleven planning 2018-27 re-site plan control agreement for Colchester North Public School 
And this is together with authorizing bylaw for the site plan control agreement and bylaw 1719 uh, for three readings this evening. Sub report for receipt and that council approved the site plan control application to permit the construction of a new parking area and bus base at Colchester North Public School. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Planning 2018-28, re-agriculture related activities in the zoning bylaw wards two and three, and this is together with bylaw 1723 to amend the comprehensive zoning bylaw 1037. For receipt, that bylaw 17, for receipt in that bylaw 1723, received three readings this evening. Moved by Councilor Bondi, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item nine, any reports from our youth member, Ava Hoffman? Welcome, Ava. Hi, um, no report tonight. Contra vote. Ava, how much, uh, how much longer for you off on your summer break? Um, we have three days left this week, then exams start Friday, and then exams go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we're off. So June, the end of June? Yeah, basically. So so then, um, it, just for the record, Ava wouldn't be here during the summer vacation, correct? Just so she knows, like, what her schedule? Yeah, uh, I'll be here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't realize that. Wow, you were committed. You're com <laughs> committed than everybody at this bar, Ava. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's good. Hey, he's going for thirty days, but you're going to be here. <laughs> he's going to Ireland. <laughs> Thanks, Abe. Item ten. Any updates from County Council this evening? Deputy Mayor Miller, I was the only thing is that chlorine thing. I Councilor Bondi was there. I didn't know if she stayed there or not all evening to hear what was going on there but well I guess I could say wow we hear from these experts and they say this and we hear from those experts and they say that and well you know that's going to be our decision to make as a municipality one day but but they still came to County Council about the fluoride stuff so that was the only thing I was going to talk about but we're going to deal with that ourselves one day thanks Eleven point one correspondence to be received. That the correspondence listed in agenda item eleven point one be received, and we are indicated to further share such information with the community. Move by Councillor Snively, then we see Councillor Rogers with a question, sir. Not so much a question as I would like to see uh, eleven point one one from the Essex Windsor Essex County Humane Society. I'd like to receive and support that, please. I don't know, it's not asking for, I think it asks for support okay. in the letter if I, if I find it. Okay. Well, we, we received the letter, but I think we, we need and to support. publicly support this too, this initiative. On one for sure. Yeah. So through the chair, would the motion be amended to receive the other items and then, and then separately as a motion receive and support 11.1? Uh, Councillor Snively, you're okay with that? Anything further? Councilor Bondi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, along with Councilor Rogers, with the correspondence from the Humane Society, I would like to, I saw that the locations are in Windsor and Essex, but if we could write back and find out if there's any in our municipality, I would love to know that because I sent volunteers to, to help them before. I tried to see it, but I, I couldn't. I was going to message Melanie Coulter, but I didn't want to bother her. But it would be really nice if our council knew where those locations were in our municipality so we could show up, make them feel comfortable, give a donation, and promote it on our town Facebook. That was another thing I was going to see. If we do find locations in our community, perhaps Alex and our media team can promote that. Because I think that the town of Essex, our council has been very proactive in terms of animal welfare initiatives. And this just kind of you know, builds that partnership. 
So that, that was my comments on that particular piece of correspondence. On the Essex-Windsor Solid Waste Authority, the regional landfill operations. I was reading this report today, and I'm not sure how to ask for this again, but I would like to ask for this again, probably the sixth time, maybe, I don't know, how we can get a report on auto shredder fluff starting from, I don't know, uh, 1995, 1996, 97, 98, 99, and so we can look at patterns on auto shredder fluff. If you look at the agenda, 2016 to 2017, there was a 21% increase on auto shredder, shredder fluff. I want to find out why and if it's going up, if it's going down, how it's trending, and it's important. And, and I can go on all the reasons why it's important that we know, but I think first we collect the information for, not necessarily for this term of council, but for the next term of council. So they have that, and so the council and administration can monitor that. Another thing, I also did some digging with that report today, and I started taking screenshots of uh, the landfill and how much space we have left. And I'm really um, worried that our region does not know how much space we do or how much space we don't have left. If you look at it, if we continue to put waste in, in the way we are at this rate in 2016, 2017 uh, numbers, we won't have 20 years left. And that's just me crunching numbers. But we're already in cell four. The landfill only goes to cell five. My other worry is, is I was talking to other councillors and mayors. I talked to Nelson Santos, Aldo De Carlo today, just by Facebook, uh, messaging them saying, did your council receive this? And they said, no, the county receives it, the county councillors receive it, but the councillors don't receive it. So all of the councillors at the local level don't know the numbers at the landfill. And this is a regional initiative. We all need to know what's going on with our landfill. Not because not because we're so worried that we're going to fill it up. That is the worry. But the next worry is, where are we going to put the next one? We need to figure that out. And 20 years away, you know, 15 years, uh, we, might, we only might be 10, 15 years away from finding the next landfill in Windsor, Essex County. So every elected official, every elected official heading into a campaign, whether they be a candidate, needs to have this information. So I would like to ask that we, we send that off to the local councillors at their attention. And I'd really hope that, that every single councillor picks up on this. Like, you have to pick up on this. You have to read this and start paying attention to this. Because this, to me, it's exciting. Not in a good way, but it's alarming exciting. We need to pay attention to this. And heading into an election year, all of the candidates need to pick up on this and start following this. And then we have to look at the new terms of council, waste reduction strategies. And I know we've talked about it, but we've never really followed through. But that will be, that will be a mission, I'm hoping, of the next terms of council, waste reduction strategies and and that's where it starts. It starts at the numbers, right? We crunch the numbers and see where we got to go there. I don't want this to be a landfill that only lasts us 10 years. I want it to be a landfill that lasts us another 100. So we need to come up with a plan. And none of us are really sitting here making a plan. We just watch these reports come by each year. But we never really sit and jump on that bandwagon. So I'm asking this council and I'm asking everybody uh, to jump on this bandwagon with me. Okay, I can answer some of your questions. And it is sitting on that committee we do have a good 40 years. And if you look in the report, the tonnage going into that landfill is coming down because the county of Essex, the landfill, those people that work there, they have initiatives out there that they're putting into place. And if the government didn't charge us so much for the plastic stuff, apart from other things, we'd be do, doing that, which would make our landfill last a lot longer. But the, the expense to do that one simple extra product is overwhelming, the cost. Now, with regards to the fluff, the fluff is a lot less expensive. And if the dirt, you know, they put, have to put the clay on top, will take this much. This is how much, watch, this is how much the fluff takes. Using the fluff, it's legal, It's everything's about it, it's no more expensive than dirt, and it will make our landfill last that much longer by using the fill. So when they can get this fill, they're taking it versus the clay. But I've talked to Eli about this, Miotis, and he's prepared to give us whatever we want from him. You know, I asked him, in fact, if you'd ever called to find out things with regards to your questions. They're the people to ask, those people that look after that landfill. But he will give us a report, like he, I told him. Councilor Bonney says half a dozen times we've asked and we've never got it. He says, well, I've never seen it. 
And we have a new manager there also, Tom Marentet, so maybe we'll get, I'll get those two together one day and we'll get something for you, Councilor Bundy. Councilor Rogers and then Councilor Snively. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, maybe you touched on it. I wanted to uh, uh, ask the question, and you did, you did say that the tonnage is going down, which I saw, the tonnage is going down at the landfill, but the fluff went up, and the fluff is used to cover the, the, the dumping and landfilling. And uh, in, in the past, uh, uh, you know, you, you, they put the, the landfill, and then they put the fluff on top. So why do they need more fluff when they're putting less tonnage in there? And we, I, if I'm not mistaken, we let this fluff come in at an re extremely reduced rate. Thank you. And the reason it's going up is because they have to cover that daily, daily, and they're using less clay. So they're using more fluff. But I'll get something from the department over there. Councilor Snively. Through your worship, uh, I, I think uh, 40 years is a little light on the uh, uh, life. I, I think there's more than 40 years there, I'm pretty sure. And as, as far as uh, to uh, Councillor Bondi, um, I, I can see her concern about filling this landfill up. But we do recycle a lot more than we did before. Uh, and I think that's educational. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, once this landfill does fill up, we do have, I don't know if you're aware of it, we do have property across the street too, the Offner, the Offner farm. So uh, it'll be a it'll be a long, long time before uh, our present landfill fills up. We have the property adjacent right across the street. So I don't know if the rest of the council knew that or the public. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, sir. Your worship. A couple points, um, Councilor Bondy. I just wanted to give you a little bit of reassurance. They're starting cell four, but they still haven't filled cell two and three. What happens is uh, they try and go on a slope. So what they do is they develop the next, they start developing the next one. Uh, cell one is completely full. Cell two has probably got another couple of years before, before it's completely filled. But what they do is they build it on a slope so the trucks can run up. So they're gonna start off in, in four now, build it up a little bit so that they can ramp up to uh, number two. So the other ones aren't full yet, even though they're opening four. Because I, I would have thought the same thing if I hadn't been more involved with it. Uh, I want to get back to the uh, auto shredder fluff. Um, a couple of years, two terms ago, I think, of council, um, I think council, well, Councilor Bondi wouldn't have been on council then. But I did bring it up um, about the auto shredder fluff because it was a concern at the landfill liaison committee. And at that time, uh, I thought maybe we should hire a lawyer to check into it because what I'm finding, Mr. Mayor, is that about 20 to 25 percent of everything that's going into the landfill is auto shredder fluff. So it's taking space of tons of garbage that could go in otherwise. And I know that they're saying that, you know, like space wise, you know, like it can only use this much auto fluff compared to this much clay, but. I'd, I'd like to know that for sure, if, you know, like uh, the explanation. Um, the landfill gets, because it's a, a coverage, a cover, rather than actual refuse going into the landfill, it's considered coverage. Uh, Essex Windsor Solid Waste does not have to pay the town of Essex its royalty on that auto shredder fluff, even though they're being paid, but they pay for clay. The auto shredder fluff, they're paying, somebody's paying them to take it. And 100% of that revenue goes to Essex Windsor Solid Waste. It's like, I can't remember the dollar amount that they're getting. But because, because it's not considered ref refuse, they get 100% of that income. We, the town of Essex gets zero dollars on that. And it's turning out to be about a quarter of whatever goes into that landfill now. So Essex Windsor Solid Waste is getting that 100% of the revenue from that. We don't get anything. What I'm concerned about is, is that they're taking as much auto shredder fluff as they possibly can because they get 100% of the revenue rather than taking what they need and putting it down. So maybe they're only putting this much, but they really only need to put this much. But they're putting extra because they get a revenue off of it. And there's nothing, there's no standard to say 
what amount of auto shredder fluff is the correct amount. So I thought two terms ago that we should have, I, w I wanted to hire a lawyer, but it, uh, council didn't seem to think that was a concern at that time. But maybe we should look at it again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chair. Contra Bundy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and that's why if council of the day had a table that went with them on council orientation that said this is the auto shredder fluff issue, then the council of the day could have it. And that was last term that we talked about getting a lawyer. I was here because I was on the landfill liaison committee for four years and I was saying, hang on, look, look at this fluff. This fluff numbers were going up and down. I also don't know if I have a different agenda package than some people because I'm seeing the waste landfill tons. Is it tons or tones? Tons? Tons? Wow. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing the numbers, and the numbers are not, like, going down. Sure, there's some up and down. But in 1997, we had 83,000. 83, and in 2017, we had 245,000. So it's gone up. Like, if it's, I don't see that it's going down. So I don't know. I would love a 100-year landfill. Mr. Mayor, I have to excuse myself, and I'll be back in a minute. With that up and down, we had some floods, big floods, and most of that stuff that came from Lakeshore, Tecumseh, Windsor, came right out here. I mean, tons and tons. So it goes up and down, but overall, they tell us at the solid waste meetings that the tonnage of recyclable garbage is going down. So anyways. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, right now the only motion on the floor is to receive and support the first item under 11.1 .1 and then receive the other three items. Yep. Favor. Motion carries. Correspondence to be considered for receipt and support, 11.2.1, City of Windsor, re rental housing component of the, uh, the social infrastructure fund uh, that said correspondence from the City of Windsor asking Council if the Town of Essex wishes to participate in the 2018 rental housing component of the social infrastructure fund, and if so, to notify the City of Windsor on or before July 16th, be received or received and supported. Receive and support by Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Councilor Rogers. I just have a question of administration. Boy, it was really interesting reading this piece of material. Should we be jumping into this both feet? Or what is your what are your thoughts? Or do you have any? If you don't have any, that's fine too. Okay. Okay. Because it looked very interesting to me. I don't know, Mr. Morrison, did you look at that and see the monies and stuff that are involved in that? Well, no comment? Or, yeah, have a look at that. Wow, looked very interesting. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All in favor? Motion carries. 11.2.2, .2, that the correspondence from the Town of LaSalle to the Ministry of Transportation dated May 30th be received or received and supported. And if so, uh, supported, uh, the appropriate letter of support to be sent to the Ministry of Transportation, the Premier of Ontario, uh, our Essex MPP, and the Town of LaSalle. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Councillor Rogers to send a letter. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? That carries. Item 12, that the minutes listed in agenda item 12, together with any recommendations noted therein, be received and adopted as circulated. Support. By Councillor Bonnie, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Under item 15.1, uh, the following notice of motion was uh, deferred to, to the, this evening's uh, meeting. It was first presented at the uh, May 7th regular meeting of council and is back before council for uh, discussion and consideration. Uh, the stated motion from May 7th is 
that council ask administration to review and bring back a draft bylaw which limits the idling of vehicles in the town of Essex as moved by Councillor Bondi and requiring a seconder. Mr. Mayor, if I could ask that we just uh, deal with our other business and we'll come back to that uh, so that Councillor Bondi can fully participate in that okay. discussion. That's okay, okay with Councillor Bondi, sure. Thanks. Uh, so, so through the chair, all, all items under uh, item 15 will come back. Okay. Uh, moving on to item 16, any reports and, and announcements from council members this evening? Or with Councilor Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd just like to uh, let everybody know that the John R. Park Homestead is celebrating 40 years. I think it's actually today that it is uh, as a living museum in our community. And I have uh, great thanks to uh, current curator, uh, Chris Ives, and, the, and all past curators of, of, the, of the museum, as well as Urca that take uh, exceptional and very good care of uh, the John R. Park Homestead, which is in our, in, our, in our municipality. And it's, again, 40 years as a living museum in, in our community. Thank you. Councilor Rogers. Thank you very much for that. That is an important piece of our municipality. Councillor Snively. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. This is more to the public and to the media. Um, I've been uh, hounded by the public about the Moyer Ferris um, operation out here on number three behind Canadian Tire. Just to let the public and the uh, media know that Chad Ferris is still coming to Essex. But there was a delay with the MTO, okay, which delayed it, and he had to lease a building on Manning Road, and he had to sign a three-year lease. So he's going to probably start building. He let me know on the weekend, probably within a year to a year and a half. He will. He is coming out here, and it's a big business. It's his uh, uh, Moyer Ferris Crane Company. He just bought out Moyer himself, so it's Chad Ferris that owns the company by himself now. So he's coming out here. He's got a fabricating business, too, he's putting there. And the other one is the development in Harrow. There's all kinds of rumors going out about Delabana, okay, the 211 homes there. And they, uh, there's rumors out there there's a big delay to uh, November. That is not true. I talked to the developer this afternoon. They're just waiting for the final uh, drawings from Stantac. And they're, they're hoping to have the shovel in the ground very, very shortly. So there is no delay there. The only delay is Stantac, and it's a very short delay. Just let the public and the media know. Thank you. Sure, Councilor Bundy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe our AMO list had another addition this week. Uh, we were, uh, Council was talking about adding the Minister of Education on there to see if we could still, you know, lobby, not particularly for us, and we may be too late, but to, to have school boards when they close down schools to, to go to the municipalities and offer them for a dollar first. So council has agreed, agreed to take that to the AMO conference and bring, it, bring with them all of the letters of support that we did receive, because I don't know how many we received, but we received quite a few letters of support for that file. So, and, and while you're there, give, them, give somebody a boot and tell them that they need to uh, offer daycare services because we got a lot of letters of support for that too. And I was told today also our, by our CEO, Donna Hunter, that one of our bylaws that we are approving tonight, 1721, uh, we're cleaning it up. We're finding a loophole in it where um, we're taking out that section of it that exempts municipal, uh, sorry, exempts school board properties from the long grass bylaw. So that's a positive move that's happening tonight. Thank you. Councilor Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd just like to make a reminder that the uh, Essex Fun Fest is coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, July 6th, 7th, and 8th, and we are still looking for volunteers. Uh, we'd be thrilled to have anybody uh, up here on council or any of our staff uh, and anybody else uh, out there that would like to uh, work with us, you can go to the Essex Fun Fest website, Essex Fun Fest 2018, click on the volunteer tab and uh, fill in your information. 
pick the hours that you're available to work. Uh, it would be great uh, to have you come out and help us out. And anybody that is a volunteer on the Thursday night, there will be a, a package for them with free rides and everything at the, uh, at the Fun Fest. So that might entice some people. So thank you. And that includes your children. <laughs> thank you for that, Chair. Come to vote. Okay. Deputy Mayor Malash. All set. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have one thing I'd like to mention is uh, Harold had a Pee Wee tournament down there again this past weekend, and I don't know what upteenth year it is. It's been going on forever almost. And uh, our little Essex Pee Wee guys, which I have a grandson playing on, they won that their division, the Pee Wee division, and they have two or three. They've got kids playing there all weekend, and it was hot, but uh, it was really good. So congratulations to those young guys and their coaches. That's it, sir. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, moving back to 15.1 on the agenda uh, for consideration this evening, notice a motion that council ask administration to review and bring back a draft bylaw, which limits the idling of vehicles in the town of Essex as moved by Councillor Bondi. Councilor Bonney. Thank you, thank you, Councilor Vokes. So, I'm excited about environmental initiatives. As you all know, it's it's no secret. But I do think uh, perhaps jumping the gun because I've done some research in consultation with our CAO. Uh, Passing a bylaw to regulate idling, it has to be about many things. It has to be about the timing, the political climate with council, the political climate with administration. And I don't think we're there yet. I'm not going to throw a, a, a noodle to the wall if it's not going to stick. But I do think, because it has been since 2016 that we did a public public education component, component. when I read about it, it says, it's kind of like this, the smoking. You know, you know, smoking is bad, smoking is bad, smoking is bad, smoking is bad. Okay, people are getting it. Now you can do a bylaw. Same kind of thing with idling vehicles, right? Public education uh, campaign, you do an outreach. It's like a carrot and a stick. First, you need a lot of carrots, 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 carrots. Uh, and then, you know, in three or four years, when people have heard our message, then you can throw a bylaw and it'll more likely stick. Right now, a bylaw would probably cause a lot of headaches operationally, and I don't think the residents have that message. So I found some really good information from the Ministry of Natural Resources all about how to do an anti-idling campaign you know, within ourselves, within our own fleet, which we already do, uh, investing in a whole bunch more signs. You know, like I would love to see signs in key areas, key areas where children are. I'm really happy with the school board. They, the kiss and ride zones at the school, they put, they put one up at Harrow Public School that says no idling, so that is awesome. I would love to see, I would love to see us invest another thousand dollars into our own resources, have Alex, he's awesome, he's got lots of innovative ideas, push out some more stuff on social media, and then, you know, at the Harrow Daycare, that's a place where, you know, I'm there, so I'm seeing cars idle. It's just about working the ground up, so if we could, if council could just possibly sanction that we do another spew of public education, that would be spew of public education, yeah. You know, it's up to us, right? And I, I'm fearful with the, the majority PC government that it's up to us to kind of lead the environmental uh, initiatives right now. So I found some great information, the Natural Resources of Canada. I can send it along to council. I'd love, you know, council's permission to, to send Alex the information and then him within co consultation with our other staff can work on some more public education for the next couple of years. And I'll be back in some form or another to hopefully see a bylaw at some point. Country Bjorkman. Thank you, Your Worship. I remember going through this the first time uh, when you brought it forward, and I agree. It's one of those things, we talked about it the same with recycling. It's one of those things that, you know, the kids learn it faster than we learn it. And they'll see the signs and they'll say, Dad, you know, you're not supposed to idle the car because it makes it hard for us to breathe. So you have to turn your car off because your kid's telling you, I'm going to have trouble breathing. So it's one of those things. It's that ground up, getting our kids, this generation, to buy into that will force us uh, to do it. And uh, it's just a good way to do that. So I do like that idea of going back to that education component, working with our schools, working with our kids to bring it up from that level. And at that time, look at a bylaw. And even as the report said to us, a regional bylaw, if there's something we can do working with our other municipalities, that it becomes a, a county 
initiative. It just has that much more behind it. So I applaud you, and uh, as always, keep going. Anyone further? Councilor Bonnie. So I guess, Mr. Mayor, my motion would would require I would make a friendly amendment on my own motion that we don't put in a bylaw, but we do a pu another public education campaign. Aries. 15.2, uh, the following notice of motion was presented at the June 4th meeting and is brought forward this evening for consideration. Uh, the council direct administration to develop a system on how councillors and residents can request the speed sign on roads to monitor traffic speeding, as moved by Councillor Bondi. Okay. Councillor Rogers, sure. Councillor Bondi, further. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I don't, I'm, I haven't have a hard time on how to get an item on the agenda just to have a public discussion with council colleagues because the only way to get an item on the agenda is to have a notice of motion which really at the end of the day council direct administration to develop a system on how councillors and residents can request speed signs well that's the mechanism to have the conversation the conversation is is there a problem do do we all see is there a problem with policing is there a problem with speeding so but what mechanism do we have to have that conversation in an open and public transparent way? So, I, you know, I want to speak publicly and I want to say, I will say as the Ward 4 representative, but I can't speak for everybody else, but I will say as the Ward 4 representative, there is either a perception or a reality. So I'm, that's, I'm doing my job by bringing it here because those are the people that sent me here. There's either a perception or reality that there's speeding problems and a lack of policing problems in Harrow Center. So I just wanted to raise it and say, you know, where do we go from here? You know, I know that we have reps on the police services board. Do we task them with it? I actually did read Mr. Groves' blog that said Councillor Snidely brought it up, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. So I know that we're having the discussions, but we're having one-off discussions. We're not having the discussion here. So I don't know if it's, if it's only a Harrow issue or if it's everybody else. So... I just wanted to let council know that there's a little bit of an issue here. I have an idea for the new term of council. I've been, I've been following, I have paper cutouts everywhere with me. I have articles from uh, the LaSalle Post that saying they did a police satisfaction survey, so that may be something that the new term of council wants to do. The LaSalle Post in the Windsor Star did a whole thing where LaSalle police are tracking down on speeders. They did a media release. I don't know what the solution is. And I don't even know if it's a problem. I just wanted to have a, a discussion with my fellow councillors. Thank you. I have Mrs. Hunter, our CAO. Through you, Your Worship. Um, I think one of the things that I, we need to get out to the public is if they have concerns about speeding cars, they need to call the police services um, non-emergency number, and that will that will uh, generate them. Uh, a need to go out and put the speed monitor up. I think that's important to tell our residents that that number should be used. And that number is, and I'm hoping the media is listening here, is 1-888-310-1122. And if you call that number, say you have speeding issues on a, on a certain specific road, that message gets back to Jeff Coulter at the OPP, and then they'll proceed to put the monitor out. For that, I have uh, Council Vokes and Council Snively. Thank you. Um, so it was raised at the Police Service Board. I just heard Councillor Bondi say that uh, Councillor Snively raised it. So raising it's one thing. What was their response? Councillor Snively. Through your worship to uh, Councillor Vokes, <coughs> I brought the issue right directly to uh, our Sergeant uh, Coulter. And uh, the areas of concern that I had, the complaints I had, uh, there's, you can put that machine out there all you want. It's not going to slow down the traffic. I'll tell you that right now. Police presence will. And uh, I can assure you the areas that I had problems on Walker Road, the third, the fourth, and uh, out behind County Collision is another one in Erie Road. I know they've had radar up there. And I, I know they've been ticketing drivers. I know that for a fact. So, matter of fact, I had some residents phone me and thank me 
because they are pulling over speeders and fining them. I, I don't know how, what, what else I can do. I mean, the only way you're going to slow them down is police presence. And we got to understand one thing. An officer cannot be there 24 hours a day. We all understand that. So if that answers your question, Councillor. I I, actually, actually, it didn't. It never even come close. It was just some spew about problems you have in specific areas you have and sitting as a chairperson as a police service board and how you address it had nothing to do with the question I asked because my concerns are the concerns that Councillor Bondi has who raised it as an issue about her specific areas months ago so again let me reiterate my question to you as a chairperson of the police service board it was acknowledged that you sat as a police service chairperson and it was raised over the concerns that Councillor Bondi had a speeding. So my point is, is that, and I want to hear about the sign because that's not a, that's not a, a, uh, a, a resolution, it's a reaction. So my question is, is what did the police attendees at that particular meeting, hearing our concerns as Councillor in specific areas of that of Councillor Bondi, what did they commit to doing? I am on the police service board also. The question that we raised was the speed sign, and that's what Councilor Bondi wanted to know about the speed sign. How do we get these to the residents? That question was put to the police, and the report was that sheet is about that long and this long, people requesting the sign. And that's all we have to do is call Jeff Coulter ask him to get our name on the sign. Maybe, if it is really, really bad, and he gets half a dozen of those, I, and I'm saying maybe, I'm not speaking for him, maybe it'll be brought up the list. I don't know that, but we were told there's a list like this of people that wants that sign, and I forget where I saw it, just on the weekend, out Colchester Way someplace, you know, but that's what they reported okay. to us. Okay, I, I, can, I can appreciate that, but again, Again, if a counselor has a problem with a specific area where she's requesting a speed sign, to me, and I might be wrong, it's kind of like putting the it's kind of like putting the cart in front of the horse. Because if it was me and I was I was had responsibility in doing that, I would assign a police officer to go out to the area of concern and then put the sign out. I, I, we don't do nothing. We just we just roll a sign out, stick it there, and that's the fix. That's not the fix. It's Where like it's 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 it's, it's oh my god. It's it's the the problem is not not. I've never seen a sign yet writing a ticket up for somebody speeding. I'll say point order. Okay, go okay. point of order. I, I'll, I'll, go point, go order. point of order. This ought to be interesting. Listen, go ahead. This is a point. Okay. Now, point and order is, my point order is I brought her concerns yeah. to the police service board. Yes. She asked for the machine yes. to be out there, counselor. Yes. The machine went out on Barber yes. Road and so did radar. Yes. So counselor votes. What do you want the police oh. to do? Oh, there it, well, no, if I could. If I could. No, no. no. Okay. Okay. It's just point order. I have to okay. deal with sure. it. I, I'm just saying through through the chair here, counselor Bondi asked me to bring it to the police service board, which I did. She asked for the speed sign to be out there, which it was. She asked for presence of the police officer in a car to be out there, which he was. What more do you want us to do? Well, what I want you to do, if I could. No, no, no. Okay. okay. I, I'm finished. Now, I've heard your point of order, but we told them that a couple of times already. So continue, sir, without trying to tell the police what they're going to do because we can't do that. No. First of all, first of all, I, I, want, I want to correct something that was said. Okay. Not once did it, was it identified through the police service board that at a request of Councilor Bondi, they went out there and secondarily did radar. Now you're saying they did radar. They did. So, can I, so is that indicated in the minutes so of the meeting? Please, it should be. It should be. 
and I, I'm requesting the minutes of the meeting the police service board because I want to make sure that it was agreed that they would put radar there because we pay for that as taxpayers. So, so I want to make sure that the minutes show, as, as announced by the mayor and by, by, by Councillor Snively, that the police agreed and did follow up with radar there. Now, don't get me saying I agree, because I didn't. I oh, okay, exactly. okay. Well, then, okay. Then, then I just want the minutes shown that the police agreed to put radar there. Okay. Because if, if, if they didn't agree, then we need to reiterate with them that they need to do that. Because a sign don't do nothing. A sign is just a mechanical device that kind of warns people. That's all it does. It doesn't protect our neighborhoods in terms of safety, in terms of her concerns. And it, but, and again, so if the minutes reflect, and if somebody could email that to me tomorrow, if the, if the minutes of the police service board minutes reflect that they sent radar out there to those specific areas, then I won't say a word. If it doesn't say that, then I'm going to raise it as a concern. And I'll leave it at that. Mr. Ogier, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I was just going to state that we don't yet have the minutes from that no, no, police but, services meeting. Saying. When we get I just forward them to me because I want to identify that through the police service board that we work with, that they got somebody there in radar as identified they did. And I can tell you, you'd be like if you get it because those people don't tell us how they're going to police our municipality. Their mandate is to give us safe, good policing you know and they're and they're not going to tell us everything that they do i know that but hopefully we'll get a, something back from them. okay yeah so so through you mr chair we still have the motion on the table uh, moved by councillor bondi seconded by councillor rogers okay okay thank you very much uh, still continuing under notices of motion, uh, at, during adoption of agenda this evening, Councillor Bondi stated that she wished to present a, a notice of motion. Councillor Bondi. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Just uh, for the next council meeting, I'd like our town council to have a discussion because I've also been following the paper about fluorination in our water systems. So we form an opinion, yay or nay. I just want to have a notice motion that we discuss it. I don't know how else to have it discussed. And with that, I'm going to excuse myself because Rick has to drive to Toronto tonight. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, item 17.1. 17.1 bylaws for third and final reading. 1698 to provide for the eighth concession west drain. By Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Councilor Snivy. Questions? All in favor? I need one more. All in favor? Yep. Motion carried. We're down to four now. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't anyone else leave. 1714 to confirm the proceedings from the June 4th regular council meeting. Moved by Councilor Snivy, supported by Councilor Rogers. Questions? All in favor? It carries. <laughs> 17.2 on the agenda, bylaws for first, second, third, and final readings. 1720 to authorize the execution of agreement between the Town of Essex and the City of Windsor. And this is in relation to the pathway to potential funding agreement. Moved by Councilor Rogers, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Questions? All in favor? That carries. Bylaw 1721 to amend bylaw 1440, being a bylaw regulating nuisance weeds and tall grass in the Town of Essex. Moved by Councilor Berkman, supported by Councilor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And bylaws for two readings, 1724, to confirm the proceedings of this June 18th regular council meeting. Moved by Deputy Mayor Millar, supported by Councilor Berkman. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Deputy Mayor Millar, and Councilor Bjorkman, all in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight, and have a great evening.